Hi, in this video we'll be looking at sharp light filter mapping. We'll be looking at what filter mapping is, why and when you should use filter mapping, how to use the filter mapping panel, how to create a basic filter mapping, how to create a conditional filter mapping, and how to create a nested filter mapping, using the nested filter mapping as an output in Query Builder. So what is filter mapping? Well, filter mapping is a tool in Sharpalite that allows you to get a customizable group of values assigned to a centralized filter mapping, which can then be used to filter results using only the filter mapping instead of all of the individual values, or can be used to determine the group from the value in a query. For instance, here we're using the filter mapping fmdemo1a to filter account code. When we preview this, we can see that only records with the allowed values are displayed. As another example, if we have the groups that we've defined as miscellaneous payable and revenue, we can then modify the options of an output to display the respective group for each account code. So why would you use filter mapping? The first reason, as mentioned before, is that it allows you to group a series of values to use as a filter into one filter mapping that is centralized. This means that if you have 20 reports, each using the same filters, instead of setting the same filters in each of the 20 reports, you can set one filter mapping to contain those filters, and then have each of those 20 reports use that filter mapping. This should make it easier to create reports. It's also worth noting that filter mappings can have conditional rules. For example, if an account had different account codes across multiple companies, you could create a condition that selected the correct account code for the company. The other main reason that you could use filter mapping is to create customizable and arbitrary groups. For instance, if your solution only had groups for payable accounts and miscellaneous accounts, but you wanted to add a revenue group, you could add a revenue group through Sharpalite filter mapping. This group can then be used either as a filter or as a lookup for the group of an account code. We'll now look at how to use the filter mapping panel. There are two main ways to open it. The first one is to open the Applications menu and select Filter Mapping. The second method, and simpler for creating filter mappings, is to double-click on a filter in Query Builder, select a series of values, right-click, and select Filter Mapping Create. This will generate a filter mapping, pre-populating the code, group, author, account name, and the mapping based on the values that you had selected. It will also populate the code path. On the filter mapping window, the top section displays all of the filter mappings that you have created. The buttons on the side allow you to create new filter mappings, allow you to delete existing filter mappings, based on which one you have selected, and allow you to copy existing filter mappings based on which one you have selected. It also has the refresh option in case any changes that you've made are not displayed. Next we have the details section. This has a code, group, category, author and description. These are all metadata and should be as descriptive as possible with the code being unique. You can also enable or disable the filter mapping here. Next we have the Mapping section. Here is where the values for the filter are defined. As you can see, you can add comments with double slashes, or you can have multi-line comments with a slash and an asterisk, ended by an asterisk and a slash. The values that the filter allows are defined in a list, as seen here. They can be either pipe delimited, or they can be comma delimited. In this case, they're pipe delimited. Filter mapping allows for both normal values, such as words and numbers, as well as several special values, such as blank, which translates to an empty string, null, which translates to null in SQL, and like, followed by a value containing a wildcard or percent sign. This is translated to the like command in SQL. In this instance, as we're using like 140 wildcard as percent sign, it will match any value starting with 140 and having any amount of following characters. We'll now take a look at some conditional filter mapping. The first section of each of these is the driver. When it's two closing angle brackets, 
it's always the super field of the database you're using. In this case, I'm using SAP Business One, so the super field is company name. We then have like and 10% sign. This means that if the company is OEC Computers Australia, the filter mapping will allow all values starting with one zero and having any amount of following characters. Similarly, if it's the German company, the filter mapping will allow all values starting with 11 and having any amount of characters after that. If the company is neither the Australian nor German company, it will simply allow all values starting with the 12 and having any amount of characters after that. Conditions can also be nested. For example, here, we have the company name as the super field, but then we have several lists within that. We have the revenue group, the payable group, and the miscellaneous group. These are shown to not be the super field based on the double colons. Next, we have the code path section. This is used to define which fields the filter mapping applies to. These can be viewed by right-clicking a field in Query Builder, selecting information, and viewing the code paths down at the bottom. One instance that you might change this is if you have a materialized query that uses the same field. You could add the code path from the materialized query to the code paths, and the filter mapping will then apply to that. For the following demonstrations, we'll be using the Sample SAP database on the Sharplight website under Resources. We'll be using a summary report with the product of SAP Business One and the table chart of accounts. For the next demonstration, we will create a filter mapping similar to this one, representing a series of account codes, any account code starting with 140, any account codes that are null, and any account codes that are blank. We will then use the created filter mapping in a query to return only the allowed values. The first thing to do is to select multiple records, right-click and select filter mapping create. This will automatically generate the code, group, author, description, and it will add all of the values that you had. Whether it's comma or pipe delimited will depend on which values you selected and whether they have commas or pipes in them. We'll change this metadata to be descriptive with the code being unique. We will then select apply and make sure that we double click the filter mapping we created in the filter lookup. You can see here that account code is now filtered by the filter lookup that we've selected. We'll select preview and see that only the account codes we selected are being displayed. If we want to include the filter mapping, but also certain other fields, we simply select the filter mapping, make sure this is in, and we can add more values with commas. We'll select OK, preview it, and see that the additional value is now displayed. If we want some more advanced functionality, we can edit this filter mapping and add a like value to it. This uses the SQL like command, meaning that the percent sign will work, but more advanced functionality may be available depending on which type of SQL you are using. View the documentation of your SQL database for more information. In this example, we'll use like and then 12. This means it will allow any values starting with one, two, and then having any amount of characters after that. We'll also add in null and blank. Null means that it will allow values that are null, and blank means that it will allow values that are empty strings. We'll apply this, make sure it's selected, and preview it. Here we can see that all values starting with 12 are also returned. We'll inspect the SQL to see how the filter mappings are actually implemented. This where clause is where the filter mapping actually comes into play. Here you can see it's using the SQL in command to determine whether the account code is in the list of values that we supplied, or the account code is like n12 wildcard, which is the like value from the filter mapping, or the account code is null, or the account code is in, and then the empty string. This demonstrates that filter mapping is a SQL level filter, so that values that aren't permitted by the filter mapping won't be returned at all.
This next demonstration will cover how to use conditional filter mapping. As you can see in the mapping field, we have three lines enclosed in square brackets. Each of these corresponds to the driver field, which in this case is the company. If the company is Australia, we'll display account code starting with 10. If it's the German company, we'll display account code starting with 11. And if it's neither of those, it'll be 12. We'll make sure it's selected, noting that we have the Australian company selected. Preview it. And see that they're all 10. We'll switch to the German company. And see that they're all 11. Then we'll switch to one that's neither the Australian nor the German company. Preview it. They all start with 12. We'll now take a look at how to create a conditional filter mapping similar to the one shown earlier. As mentioned earlier, the three conditions are enclosed in square brackets. Each condition has the driver separated by either angle brackets or colons, and then the list of values that are allowed. In this case, because angle brackets are used, the driver is always the superfield, in the case of SAP Business 1, company name. The first condition translates to if the company name is OEC Computers Australia, Allow records with the account code of null, or an account code starting with 1-0. Similarly, the German company will only allow records with null, or account code starting with 1-1. If the company is neither the Australian or the German company, only allow account codes with null, and account codes that start with 1-2. If we apply this, and close it, and we make sure it's selected, press OK, Noting that we're using OEC Computers Australia in preview, we can see that all of the account codes start with 1-0. If we switch to the German company and preview it, we can see that the only account codes start with 1-1. And if we switch to a company that's neither the Australian nor the German company, we can see that all of the account codes start with 1-2. If we look at the SQL statement of this, this WHERE clause is generated already considering the superfield. This next section is about nested conditions in filter mapping. Here we've got the first condition being the company name, and then we have three nested conditions with revenue, payable, and miscellaneous. This is replicated for the default and German company. For the nested condition of revenue, we'll allow all account codes that are null or starting with 1-0. For payable, it's null or 1-1, one, one. and for miscellaneous, it's null or 1-2. We'll make sure this is applied, we'll close it, we'll make sure that it's selected, and we can see that in the filters lookup, we have the three nested drivers. If we, for example, select miscellaneous and preview it, we can see that it's all of the account codes starting with 1-2. If we select payable, we can see that it's account code starting with 1-1. And if we select revenue, it's account code starting with 1-0. And if we switched company to Germany, it would be 2021 and 22 respectively. We'll clear the outputs, add back in account code, account name, and another account code. We'll right click the second account code, click on options, click on functions, select filter mapping, make sure the driver is unique code. For the list, select the filter mapping that we made set it to return unique code, and make sure that account code is set to all. This will allow us to get the group of the value. If we preview it, we can see that the account codes starting with 1-0 are in revenue, all of the account codes starting with 1-1 are in payable, all of the account codes starting in 1-2 are miscellaneous, and anything that wasn't defined in a group just has the value of the account code. We'll now create a nested filter mapping similar to the ones shown earlier, using it both as a filter and as an output. This can be very useful in many situations. 
The main reason is that this expands on the previous example. In the previous example, we're assuming that there's only one group for each company that's allowed. However, now we can define different groups, for instance, revenue, payable, and miscellaneous for different companies. Then, depending on which company is selected and which driver we've selected for the nested condition, it will allow different series of values. It's also worth noting that these drivers can be arbitrarily defined. For instance, if you charge different rates, you could have one group that's charged at 100% and another group that's charged at 80%. Then, when you're creating reports, you could set the filter group to the ones that are charged 100% and get a list of clients that way, or if you have a report listing clients, you could set an output to report which group they belong to. And next to the client, you would have whether they're charged 100% or 80%. In this example for the Australian and German company, we have three groups, revenue, payable, and miscellaneous. It's worth noting that if you find this text box is too small, you can select pop out edit and have a larger text box to work with. For the Australian company, revenue, is null and all account codes starting with one zero, payable is null and all account codes starting with one one, and miscellaneous is account codes that are null and all account codes starting with one two. The German company is similar, except instead of one zero, it's two zero, one one it's two one, and one two it's two two. For this example, we're not including anything in the default superfield, which is if the company is neither Australian nor German. It's worth noting that because we used colons for the nested drivers, they appear in here. It's possible to parameterize the driver over here. So for instance, we could select miscellaneous, and because it's the Australian company, we only have a count code starting with one, two. However, if we selected payable, it's only a count code starting with one, one. We'll go back to selecting all for the moment. We'll copy the account code output, right click it, and select options. We'll go to functions and mapping. We'll set the driver to be unique code, and as the list, we'll select the filter mapping with the nested conditions. We'll select OK, and we'll have it return the unique code. Now, if we preview this, we will see that all account codes starting with one zero have the field that we created as revenue. All of the ones starting with one one are payable, and all the ones starting with one two are miscellaneous. If we switch company, and we go down to where we set it, we can see that two zero is revenue, two one is payable, and 2.2 is miscellaneous. We'll take a look at the SQL and see that the output we added is converted into a case statement. So, in this video we covered what filter mapping is, such as centralizing filters and using lookups on drivers. We've covered an overview of the filter mapping window. We've covered creating a basic filter mapping. We've covered creating a basic conditional filter mapping. And we've covered nested filter mappings and using them as both filters and as outputs. Thank you for listening.